Hey, Kevin, what are you working on? Well, I've got a I've got a fountain over there on the lift table that I just started today and this is part of what I need to cut out in order to skin the two sides of the arch that's going to make the fountain itself. And I thought, well, you know, this is a really good time to talk about all the different ways I can, I mean, anybody can screw up using a plasma cutter. So along the line of, you know, what could possibly go wrong when you're using your plasma cutter? Well, the first thing, make sure it's plugged in. Been there, done that. Flipped it on and stood here for about 30 seconds going, wow, there's no lights. Oh. <laughs> Next thing, make sure you got air. Make sure your compressor's running. Make sure you've got the right pressure. You know, not only out there in the compressor, but set on your, your machine as well for whatever you're gonna be cutting. So you're probably asking, all right, Smarty, which settings for which? Which are the right settings? Well, I'm going to cut a piece of eighth inch mild steel, eighth inch plate. So I've got the amperage set at about 32 or so. And the air pressure, oh God, it's way up at 90 PSI because I was cutting half inch plate with this thing the other day. So let me back that back down to about you know, about 55 or so because I know I just put a brand new nozzle and tip in it or nozzle and electrode in it and it's the, the small one it, it's like a, like an old 30 or something like that real real tiny little hole don't need a lot of amperage don't need a lot of pressure just cutting something thin with it so that's about where you set it up at least on this machine how, like, how do you know that though? how do you know that uh, I called a very knowledgeable man who makes his living with plasma cutters and we spent about an hour on the phone going over different tip sizes and pressures and amperages and why would you use this one instead of that one Google get on get on Google you know correct settings you know correct plasma cutter amperage and air pressure settings and see what you find that way. Come out to the forum, www.weld.com. Come to the Weekend Warrior Forum. Ask the guys out there. Plenty of great guys. They're more than happy to help you, point you in the right direction for what you need. So now that you finally have your machine set up right, you got your settings correct over there, got your ground hooked up, got your, your, your metal clamp down, you've got your marks, you're ready to go. Boy, now what can I screw up? I mean, what can I mistake? <laughs> Safety equipment, dark glasses, gloves, you know, a jacket. Don't try this in shorts. Don't try this with sneakers or, you know, any kind of fabric boots. Make sure you're wearing leather boots. There's lots of hot, hot sparks down there, lots of molten metal going on. Another good way to screw things up. So another thing to check on while you go out there to turn your air compressor on, you know, and hook it up to the machine, make sure you have a water separator in that line someplace. You know, and I like this AHP Alpha Cut. It comes with a water separator already built into the machine. But if it's an older plasma cutter, it may not have one. You know, so you need either a separate one that goes on the back of the machine, you need one that goes on your air compressor, someplace. You know, get the water out of it, clean air, dry air, that'll make them last the longest. I see like even here, this is a big water separator that I put on a couple of years ago with one of my older plasma cutters because it didn't have one built in. Just leave it right there. Don't even take it off. Just leave it right in your line. Two water separators, even better. You know, keeps it clean, keeps it dry, makes that machine live longer. So we're finally ready to get around to actually cutting something. <laughs> Don't try to freehand it if you, can, if you can avoid it at all. I mean, I don't care how young you are, I don't care how steady you are, to stand here and try and hold this thing and freehand it and try to get a smooth cut with it, you're gonna get wiggles. You're gonna, you know, your heartbeat is just gonna show up in your hands and you're, gonna, you're not gonna get the smoothest cut you possibly can. Pair of training wheels, you know, help, help it just roll along. All you have to do now is just guide it and keep it pointed in the right direction. Get a straight edge. Put a straight edge on there where you can cut up against that straight edge. Help keep the wiggle out of it. Anything. Even if you just have to like, you know, brace of hand, you know, brace a finger or two to brace against your torch as you're trying to cut freehand with it. 
Okay, so now that we got all of that out of the way, everybody's safe, everybody's got their glasses on, everybody knows some of the things not to do, let's do something, let's make some sparks. Oh, I forgot something. <clears throat> Go put your respirator on, idiot. So that gives you a few things to watch out for when you're using your plasma cutter. Just things, you know, a little mental checklist. Make sure the compressor's on, make sure the water separator, blah, 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 blah. It'll help in the end, you'll get better cuts, your machine will last longer, less frustration, more work done. You wind up a happier guy at the end of the day and that much closer to a cold adult beverage. So I'm gonna go find one of those you're going to reach down there and find that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next week. And the air pressure is... I can't read it because I don't have my glasses on. Hang on. <laughs>